also, again, not, well, I did not go through, I well, I went to a thrift store, I found nothing. And that was Monday, and I didn't even go today because I didn't need to go to the post office, so I didn't get that far away. I just went to Aldi, came back. And I have been sewing. I, um, well, the skirt that I showed you that I started last week for 60 centimeter dolls, the patchwork skirt, that is this now. It's very, um, like I said, I don't know if this is more autumn leaves or fire looking. And then I also pulled more. So I think I told you that years ago I thrifted this stack of four inch cuts of cloth, quilting cloth, and like no two prints. Well, one print repeated twice, but everything else is like probably 240 pieces of cloth, maybe not that many. But they were all different, and the basis for a lot of the doll patchwork stuff that I've done that's not the just straight up scrap stuff. Because I do another thing where I get into my box of scraps from sewing and I actually make the scraps from the patchwork from scraps, which is, you know, the original idea of patchwork, but modern world, modern patchwork rules. Anyway, so that's was the basis. Like some of these were from that and then others were things that either people had sent me or that I'd gotten in like grab bags at thrift stores or yeah most of this very little of this was my um, my own choice because these aren't my colors but I do like the way this turned out hopefully somebody will like it and then also starting with scraps from that patchwork stack I made this also for some of these 60 centimeter dolls and you can see it's a little shorter Again, this I had to, to have enough scraps to make a whole skirt, I had to call in some things from my own cloth, but I was able to use some things I was almost out of, and using up cloth is always great fun. Oh, and another thing with these, I'm doing, since they are nominally going to be for other people, whether it's for sale or trade, I haven't decided yet, I'm actually finishing everything, no raw edges. So every, the inside is completely surged. There are still there are still stray threads, even with all the surging. But without the surging, it would be nothing but stray threads, which would be a mess and shedding. So all these patchwork skirts I am doing for 60, 60 centimeter dolls, I am doing finishing the inside with the surging. So I'm not sure which one is more like fire and embers, this one or this one. And then the other one I did is complete opposite of the oranges. This I only had like three that were from the scrap, the patchwork stack. And the rest came from my assortment. And this one... I know I say if you sew it together, it goes together, and that applies even more so for patchwork, is I am trying to make coordinated overall color scheme for these, but honestly, if you just grab a handful of anything and sew it together for patchwork, it will look fine. But still, sometimes I, I'll make a game out of it trying to find a theme. And this one was going okay with the blue and the purple and some dark and some light, but then I pulled some Halloween cloth that Susan had given me, thank you, and I cut out just this one little bat piece and something that made me think, ah, this is dusk, this is twilight, so I pulled this, actually this bat print was in the stack of cloth, the thrifted stack of ready cut squares, and so I just, I just really liked this after I came up with the theme for it and it made finding enough other prints to use in it go a lot easier. So yes, if you sew it together, it goes together, but it can also be fun to make a game out of finding things to go together intentionally. And I have been sewing... I started sewing some of the things that I cut out for thanks, go, thanks sewing. Starting with the stuff that I cut from this craft panel. I don't know if you remember a few years ago before I made videos, I found some craft panels in thrift stores 
and I just had so much fun cutting out details of them. You know, things are supposed to make a whole doll. I just cut out like the face or details of it to make doll dresses. And a thing that I actually like doing is making doll clothes out of the instructions. Just using this as a print, just cutting this, cutting all the clothing pieces out of the instructions. And that just amuses me. And Chris. I know Chris likes those. I don't know if anybody else likes those. So as you can see, I have been using bits of this. I have not sewn all of them yet. I still have this in Blythe size and this in Barbie size cut out. Oh, and I'm going to see if I can make this just ridiculous little shirt. No, this is not the vest. This is the illustration of what the finished vest looked like, and that face is just so starkly drawn. This print was from, I think it has a 1996 copyright on it, so that makes this, you know, retro, right? So I started sewing some of that stuff. Here's another Blythe dress. Like I said, because there were the stripes in the rest, I was able to simulate border prints. So Blythe dress, and I also was able to use a stripe, some stripes on the vest to make this stadium jacket with the proper length arms for Barbies. I also made the whole thing shorter overall, but it's the same width, so it should fit Kirby's pretty well. I still haven't mailed this, but I eventually we'll get this stack of Thanks Sewing done and mailed. So these are going to the Thanks Sewing. Another thing that ended up in Thanks Sewing, even though I didn't mean for it to initially, is I wanted to make clothes for that tan line crystal doll. I wanted to make clothes specifically for her. And she's about the same size as other 14 inch dolls, which means she's about the same size as female action figures. I just forgot, I wanted to make a shirt for her and I forgot that her neck is just thicker than other dolls. So I think this turned out fine. It would have been like a like um, hip length shirt on her, but because her neck's so thick, it just it did not sit well on her at all. However, it fits um, Barbie. It fits vintage Barbies very loosely, which means it will probably fit a curvy as a nice shirt, nice shirt dress. So this is going into the thanks sewing too, as I drop it. So slowly but surely, I'm working through stuff for the thanks sewing. I also have cut out a dress mixing these prints. Again, these are Susan, Susan cloth, and another dress made entirely of this. But right now, I have light blue thread in my machine, so I am sewing the light blue stuff. And about tan line crystal, I touched up her, I, I, I touched up her paint. Now by touched up, her paint wasn't worn or scuffed or missing anyway. Not her stock paint at least, but the design was a little lacking. So I, I looked at her and I analyzed what she was really missing was that between the eyelids and the eyeball, there was no lash line. It just went straight from eyeball to eyelid. And so also, the, the lashes that were painted on her were like above the eyelid. And I thought about using acetone to carefully remove those, but I decided in the end that what I would do with her would just paint over her original paint so it could all be, the, the additions could be removed if needed, if wanted, if she doesn't get a completely new face up at some point. So I painted the lash line on the lid, and then I decided to add a layer of pearl medium over her stock eyeshadow. So instead of just being kind of terracotta color, now it's shimmery. And I heard the, the light reflections in her eyes were slightly off center, not quite lined up with each other. So I used my dotting tool to make them slightly larger so they kind of line up now. And I gave her some blush. She actually does have stock blush. It's like airbrushed really to spurt spurt down here. And it's this odd color pink that you can barely see. Although it does show up really well under a black light. Have I told you about my hobby of shining black lights on Barbies? If you have a black light pen, like I have this. Okay, this is not a pen. My black light pen ran out of batteries. This actually came in a Playmobil set. But you see it has a blue purple LED on it. If you shine the black light onto dolls, you will see some interesting things. Sometimes it's just the fact that some of their face paint 
fluoresces madly. Sometimes it's their hair. Blonde hair especially just fluoresces. But sometimes it's like plastic that you thought matched under the black light it does not match at all. Usually elbow hinges will fluoresce really brightly, but oftentimes the head will be a different color than the neck will be a different color than the arms. Anyway, hobbies within hobbies. So her blush, Tenline Crystal's blush, shows up under the black light, but I went ahead and gave her some pastel blush up higher and more evenly. And the biggest thing was I really do think that this doll's lips had originally been a pinker color than they were when I got her. And when you look at them online, I think this just faded over the decades. So I just used my stock pink acrylic Liquitex that I've had for 20 years. Thinned it with some water and went over her original lip shape. And today I went through my box, my, my doll clothes. And like I said, I would planned to make something for her, but since that didn't work. <laughs> Eventually I want to make something for her from some of my wax prints, but right now I have this stack of cloth on the ironing board behind the camera that I'm just trying to sew through this stack of cloth and there are no wax prints in there. So eventually she'll get wax prints, but only after I get through this mental challenge first. But I did go through my doll clothes with a little more time than when I dressed her last week. And she is still wearing the same Ken shirt t-shirt with no sleeves. But this cardigan, this was um, from Anger and Graffit on Etsy. And it's really nicely made and it's supposed to be Barbie size, but it's always been a little bit too bulky for Barbie. And so the sleeves are slightly so much thread. The sleeves are maybe slightly short on her, but I'm so glad I tried this on her because it fits her so much better than Barbie. Still wearing these. I do have another pair of boots for her. They're black, so she does have more options for clothes, but I these are fun. But anyway, so here's her face now. And she looks so much better than she did stock, but her stock is still under there. I know this doll would look fantastic with a repaint, whether it's a more realistic repaint or just a more modern repaint, but you know, I like the Hong Kong style dolls. Oh, and did I show you? This is me completely rambling. This doll has really great ears. I know that might be kind of weird, but sometimes you look at a doll and you look at their ears and it's like, wow, that's, um, I guess it's an ear, but her ears are really well sculpted. If I was young, when I was young, if I'd had this doll, her ears would have gotten pierced right away, but I'm going to be kind to her and not pierce her ears. And for now, her paint is fine like this. Like I said, I don't know if I will ever have her completely repainted or not. She's, like I said, there's a few of her on eBay, but she's, I, the word I use is she's obscure, but she's not rare because rare involves value. And she's just so obscure that I guess nobody knows about her. So if you go on eBay, they have, last time I looked, they had the 12 inch dolls and there were more of these 14 inch dolls. Some people think that obscure equals rare equals valuable with the prices on them. And they even put in the auction listing, I will not lower my price, so don't even ask. It's like, you're not gonna sell that doll for $160. But they're out there, so maybe somebody else can find one and give her the gray face up that I am chickening out of giving her because I like her original face up so much. And you can tell that I don't have a lot to talk about this week, so let's keep it short. And I will say goodbye. And next week will be the day when I make my video, if I make it on a normal time, will be the day before Thanksgiving and the kiddo will be home. So I might have a guest. Thanks.